Pretty much every time we sign into any of our online accounts these days, we are asked by that account to set up two-factor authentication because the account tells us that we're more secure if we set up two-factor authentication. Now, you may have set up two-factor authentication already, and in which case, I applaud you, but you may not have set up two-factor authentication yet, in which case, I encourage you to watch this video because I'm going to show you what two-factor authentication is, tell you why it's important, show you how to set it up, and most importantly, give you some tips so that when you move devices, you aren't perpetually screwed by using two-factor authentication and then not having done what you should be doing to protect yourself. Like somebody I know, that would be me. Long story, I'll share it with you in just a moment. That's today on Dotto Tech. Steve Dotto here. How the heck are you doing this fine day? And as promised today on Dotto Tech, we're going to be talking about two-factor or two-step authentication. It's a topic we've talked about occasionally in the past, but I've got a bit of a fresh take today to share with you as well, based on some recent personal experience, which I hope you can all avoid. More on that in a few moments. Let's start with what is two-factor authentication. Two-factor authentication is a protocol, I think it's a protocol, but it's a, it, it's a thing that we use on the internet to verify that we are who we say we are when we're about to log into our account. Think about two factors. What are two factors we need? When you go to log into an account, say a bank account or an email account, what do you need? You need your username and password. Those are the first factor, the, our username and password. Those would be factor one. The second factor is a code that is generated that proves that we are who we say we are. That code has to be generated on a device which is isolated from factor one, from the, say, the just the password manager that we're using to manage our username and password. It's a device like our smartphone, which is the perfect device for two-factor authentication because it is in our possession and it is uniquely ours. Somebody hacking into our account if they are trying to get into our account and maybe they've managed to steal our username and password, that would be bad, would it not? But our bacon would be saved if we had two-factor authentication turned on because when they go to sign in, they would put in the username and password and say, ha, 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 I'm about to enter Steve's account. And then the site says, okay, give me the second factor. Tell me from your phone the secret code that you have on your phone that will allow me to add, that will allow you into our account. And the thief goes, oh no. Curses foiled again. By two-factor authentication. That's what it does for us. It's pretty simple. It's elegant to use. Uh, and there are a variety of tools we can use to set it up. And I'm going to share those with you right now. So let's dive in to setting up two-factor authentication. There are a couple of different ways that we can generate our two-factor authentication codes when we set up our two-factor authentication on any of our accounts. You can have a text sent to your phone from the account, which will allow you to gain access. That's probably the least secure way of setting up two-factor authentication. For most of us, the most popular way is having an application, a authentication application on our computer. Google Authenticator is one of the most popular. I'm gonna show you that, but I'm also gonna show you one that's, that's a, included with my password manager, LastPaths Authenticator, because some people just don't trust Google. So this gives you an option. There's another way that two-factor authentication can occur, which I think confuses some people, and that is through a related app on your phone. For example, if you're signing into your Gmail account, your Gmail account in, in acquiring two-factor authentication and requiring it might send the, uh, the, the, the authentication code through to the Gmail app on your smartphone, in which case you, it will come up with a message saying, is this you coming in? And you just say yes. So it, again, we're still using the second factor, our smartphone and our other account, or it could be our tablet in that particular case. But the same basic process is happening. We are signing in to an account. We give them factor one, username, password. They say, prove you who you are through your mobile device, either through a code that we send to your app or a text that we send to you or a code that you send to us from a authorized authenticator app like Google Authenticator or LastPass Authenticator. I hope that all makes sense. Let's walk through the process of setting it up. And if it doesn't make sense now, it will by the end of today's video, I promise you. Plus, you're gonna wanna stick around to the end because there's one 
thing which you have to pay attention to, which will jump you up and bite you in the ass when you go to switch phones in the future if you don't prepare for it right from the beginning. Okay, are you ready? Step one, on your smartphone or tablet, go and download an Authenticator app. This is probably the easiest way to proceed. You can download Google Authenticator or you can download another Authenticator app. I also have LastPass Authenticator installed. We're gonna do our first setup using Google Authenticator to show you the setup. Often when you log in to an account, it will say, you don't have two-factor authentication set up. Would you like to? In which case you can do it at that moment or you can go into your security settings and you can set up two-factor authentication within any app. So here within, in this particular case, PayPal, we're going to set it up. It says, protect your account with two-step verification. Use an authenticator app. I'm gonna say yes, use an authenticator app. Now this is very cool. Actually, I really enjoy doing this. It uses a QR code in order to create the initial connection. So how you do this is back on your Google Authenticator app on your smartphone or any Authenticator app, you hit the plus key and it says scan a QR code. So we're gonna scan it in. You point your phone at the computer and look at that, it instantly has the PayPal authorization code all set up. So I'm just gonna type that in so that it wants to verify it right away and that verification has now received the information from Google Authenticator and now two-step verification is turned on on my PayPal account. So <clears throat> if we wanna see how that's gonna work now, in the future, when I go to sign in, let's log out and let's go back here to PayPal, I go log in and it's gonna say, okay, what's your username and password? I have that in my password manager. I put that in and it says, wait a minute, what's your security code? Remember what I said to you? A hacker, somebody has stolen my username and password, they try and enter, they are foiled at this point because they don't have the Authenticator app on my smartphone. I have it here, I type in the code. And we are off to the races and I am in to my account. Isn't that a thing of beauty? It's that easy to do. Let's do the same thing very quickly now using a different Authenticator app. Let's use LastPass Authenticator to do it again. So I have LastPass set up here and I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna say set up two-step two verification. I'm gonna say use an Authenticator app, click set up, up comes the QR code. LastPass looks at the code and here is an important thing LastPass will do for us. Here's what LastPass does. It says need backup. This is something I should have paid attention to a while ago. More on that in a moment. LastPass can save all your accounts so you have them if you change devices or need to restore this one. Yes, I will back up my, my uh, LastPass. And in, in this particular case, it's gonna back it up into LastPass. So now if we go back into our Authenticator app, into LastPass, it's doing the same thing. It's asking me to enter the code here for PayPal and it's gonna be 294. 057, so we can see once again, now PayPal is married to my LastPass Authenticator app. Doesn't matter which Authenticator app you use, just consistently use the same one for all of your accounts. So that's that easy to set it up. I don't see any reason that we all aren't using two-factor authentication. Now, I, I mentioned a moment ago that I backed up my uh, Authenticator account uh, my, my LastPass Authenticator account so that I can restore it should I change devices. I hadn't thought of this before and I changed devices or I didn't know about this before. And when I changed devices to this new iPhone, I had been using Google Authenticator for the longest time on my old iPhone. And I had not looked up the fact that when you change uh, phones that you lose all of your two-factor authentication and it's very difficult to recover it all. In fact, I had to call customer service on a couple of the accounts such as PayPal in order to reclaim my account because the uh, authenticator remained tied to the old phone and I had already restarted the old phone and cleaned off all of the information from the old phone before I did it. Now, so now you can, 
<laughs> I've discovered in Google Authenticator, export your accounts, which is something you should do if you're moving phones, export your accounts before the phone, or as in the case of LastPass Authenticator, have all of your accounts backed up and then also make sure and check before you migrate devices that all of your account settings pass through. Otherwise, you're going to be spending way too much time reestablishing your connection with what are really our most important accounts. But the bottom line, two-factor authentication is not a thousand percent, well, that's not a real thing, is not 100% foolproof. It can still be beaten occasionally, but it is our best defense for protecting our privacy and our accounts from the bad guys. I encourage you to set it up for yourself. Before we go, I want to invite you to join us for one of our weekly tutorial webinars. Every week here at Dottotech, we provide a free tutorial on productivity and content creation. It's called Webinar Wednesday. It's free, it's awesome, and you're invited. Links are right here. Till next time, I'm Steve Dotto. Have fun storming the castle.